Good evening and welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. My name is Dominique Gomez. I am so glad to be here with you this evening. I was just telling the panel that I feel like I haven't been hosting or facilitating Bible study in so long. I feel like I've just, um, I'm ready to, to dive into God's word and, <laughs> fin and wrap up our theme for this month. Um, I'm going to briefly uh, go through and let my panel introduce themselves. So we'll start right here. I'm Nally Chavez. And I'm Rudy Rose. Jordan Aguilar. And I'm Dominique Gomez. I'm so excited. And I know probably people are probably like, why do they introduce themselves every, every time they have, you know, Bible study? Well, it's because I know that every time we have our Bible study, there's someone new who doesn't know our faces or doesn't know our names. So we do. We introduce um, ourselves and each other. But before we dive in, I want to start with a little bit of an icebreaker. I feel like um, I just want to get things a little light. You know, we're talking about Disney. And if anybody knows me, I am a Disney lover. I love all things Disney. You're one of those I, people. You know, <coughs> I wanted to live in Cinderella's castle when I was <laughs> young, okay, and I do okay. still have those aspirations. You know, oh. um, but I want to start as off. You don't have to clean it. Oh yeah, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. The the mice will do that. <laughs> but I'm going to start off with a little bit of an <laughs> icebreaker, and my question to my panel was, what is your go-to Disney movie? Like above ever, if there's just one time where you're like, I just want to watch a movie. I'm going to pick a Disney movie. What's the one you go to? Nellie, you want to start? Sure. Um, I love them. I love most of them. And I can find something that I can take away from everything that I watch. Mm -hmm. But The Lion King is one of my favorites because the evil Scar mm -hmm. wants to kill the king and his seed yeah. and take over the kingdom. And the calling was inside of the son the whole time, whether right, he right. acknowledged it or realized it, the calling that was on his father was on him, and I just think that's that's kind of like our lives. It is a classic. Mm -hmm. I love to, uh, Lion King. Rudy? For me, it would probably be uh, Monsters, Inc. Monsters, and Inc. The reason really? it stood out was because, like, um, it's like, let's say it's like a big corporation, right? Yeah. These are how things are done, and we're not changing from this direction. Uh -huh. But the whole storyline is, hey, <laughs> it's not really what it right. seems. <laughs> right. This is different. And, uh, the one of the main monsters took a chance on a kid, and you know, yeah. grown on it, grown on him. Yeah, that he had you know feelings yeah. for something that's not even like, and his, uh, I guess uh, he's not a monster. The kid's right. not a monster. Right. It's like, like in his yeah, in his world, right? So it's yeah, not part funny. of my role, but yet he still has some attached to it. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of the story, it kind of changed the whole idea and perception about, I guess, the little child yeah. being evil. But it went from what was it? To making them laugh now to yeah. fill up their yeah the tanks the, the, the tanks for their <laughs> <laughs> city and, and all that. That's how I know you're the baby but of the group. Monsters Inc. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jordan, what about you? Well, before Disney took everything over, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. and Star Wars and National Geographic <laughs> and so <laughs> forth, uh, I, mine was uh, Remember the Titans. I, yeah, I love yeah. Remember the Titans. I remember watching that in middle school. No, I was actually I think in sixth grade. And playing on the football team, I'd watch that movie before every football game, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that was some good stuff. Cool. Right now, though, I like Luca. I don't know if y'all seen Luca. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Luca good. is so funny, and uh, so yeah, my 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 son loves that. We watch that probably once a day now, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just I remember like Silencio Bruno. Yeah, <laughs> Silencio <laughs> Bruno. I do that to Nick, and Nick hasn't seen it yet. He's like, "What are you talking about?" It's so funny. You know, Nick had to get when Disney. Plus came out, he knew, you know, they got to get it. Now they got the bundle, so we got that too. But a lot of people think, because my favorite Disney princess is The Little Mermaid. I love Ariel. Mm. I love that movie. But my go-to is actually Toy Story. Mm. And I don't oh really have man, any, like, that's deep, a good one too. Yeah. I don't I was gonna have pick any, like, <laughs> deep reasoning for it. It just makes me so happy. Yeah, it makes me yeah. so happy. And I think that's also one of the only movies where you can actually do four and it be perfect and not like overdone and right, you just right. keep getting excited. Yeah. But now Nick told me they're doing a spin-off called Lightyear or Buzz oh, Lightyear. Okay, I haven't okay. seen the trailer, oh, wow. but I'm going to look out for it. And check it out. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. But now you know our favorite, our go-to Disney movies. If you have one, put it in the comments. Um, I'm, you know, if I haven't seen it, I'm going to watch it. You know, I, I, <laughs> I go, that, I think the kids walk in the living room and they're like, what is she doing watching <laughs> yeah. Disney? You know, I don't mm -hmm. watch reality TV. Yeah. I hardly watch TV, but my movies, most of the time, it's a Disney movie mm -hmm. that's on. All right, so getting into our study, our theme this month has been The Lion King. And we've had such powerful word come from the pulpit 
And I have received so much, and I have learned so much from this teaching. Amen. Like I say all the time, if you haven't seen the Bible studies and the, the teachings and the preachings on this theme, go back and watch them on our YouTube and our Facebook pages because you, if, if, there, if you have questions, you're going to get your answers, and you're going to learn so much. But for today's study, I titled it Hakuna Matata, and it means no worries. Okay, it means no worries, <laughs> and it makes me want to break into that song, but I'm I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'll but do it for you. Matata. <laughs> and so I'm gonna start with reading our theme scripture, which comes out of Revelation uh, chapter five, verse five, and it says, "One of the elders said to me, and this is John speaking, weep no more. In other words, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals." Going back a little bit before this verse specifically, if we start at um, Revelation chapter 2, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 2, the angel asks, who is worthy to open these scrolls? And no one on heaven or earth or under the earth, so we're talking about hell there, answered. In other words, no one was worthy. Mm -hmm. And so John began to weep because it is crucial that these seals be opened. Amen for the fulfillment of, um, you know, history and, and what God's plan is. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we come into verse 5 when the elders tells John, don't cry, don't worry. Jesus has conquered. He's worthy to open these seals. And so on the topic of worry, my first um, question to my panel is, we read in um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, to give all of our worries and cares to God because he cares about us and he loves us. But how do we cast our worries on the Lord in a practical sense? Mm -hmm. In other words, when you hear someone tell you, give it to God, how do we do that? Because I worry all the time. I was mm -hmm. a worry wart. Yeah. I was the kid who my parents would tell me, you're going to get ulcers or stress is going to kill you. Oh I goodness. would pray on worry yeah, yeah. and then worry about what I prayed. Did right. I pray the right scripture? Did oh, I pray man. enough? What did I say the right things? <coughs> Does God really know? Yeah, so how yeah. do we cast our cares on the Lord in a practical sense, on something we can implement? And who wants to start? Go ahead. <laughs> I'll start. Wait, I'll wait, go wait, ahead. Wait, all right, all right. You know, just to say don't worry is so easy to say right. but so difficult to do. Studies in the world show that 80 to 85% of the things that we worry about will never happen. Wow. And I keep that in the forefront of my mind. I think we are very um, expert at making mountains out of little molehills. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's our beautiful creative minds that go on and on and just <laughs> make things so much bigger than they really are. But one of the things that we have to do is we have to intentionally admit our need for God and right, our right. dependence on him. Yeah. Um, we've got to keep that in the forefront. We must choose to trust him and we must cling to his word and believe that it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. um, even when we don't understand, sometimes the answer doesn't come to our prayers and, and sometimes the horrible thing does happen. But even when we don't understand, we have to trust that he has said that he will never leave us or forsake us. And in his presence, we can walk through any situation. Right. And he's also said that um, he will he will work all things out for our good. It doesn't mean that everything that happens to us is good, mm -hmm. but some good is going to come out of it. Mm -hmm. So we have to, I, I know this kind of sounds trite at times, just fall into the arms of grace. Because when we don't, when we try to figure things out or we try to work things out in our mind or we make things bigger than they are, mm -hmm. we're really pride, it, just living in pride, right. thinking right. that it we is. are greater than God it and is. we are not. No. So if we humble ourselves before him, That's so good. trust him, yes. trust him, choose to trust him daily, hour by hour, second by second. Amen. Amen. That's, that's Amen. such a good point. You know, you know and, and it does, it goes back to trust. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength, Amen. right? But the, the fact of the matter is this, that you have to trust God ultimately with your salvation. Yeah. That's where the ultimate peace comes. When you have, when you have peace with God, you have the peace of God. Yes. Amen. And so, and so that's, that's your foundation. And so from, from that place, which, um, your strength is going to flow. I was trying to think of a, a metaphor on the way over here. 
I was like, you know what? I was thinking like maybe like a house of cards. <laughs> if maybe the, the foundation was like glued together, right? That was, that was a sure foundation, right? You, you know when you put that together that, there, that, that that was not going to um, collapse no matter what happened, mm -hmm. right? And so that, if that is your foundation, it doesn't matter what happens to the next level, right? Uh, I think Jesus said it this way, right? There's, a, there's a, a, a man who builds his house upon the rock or a man who builds his house upon the sand, right? If, if you know that you built your house on the rock, right, and that storm comes, all you're going to lose maybe is a few shingles, right? right? It's, not, it's not like a structural failure, mm -hmm. right, because that's your core. But if you know you built your house upon the sand and the storm comes, now you have 10 times more to worry about, right? Right. And so ultimately, if you have peace with God, I am saved. No matter what happens in this life, yeah. I am saved. Yeah. That's my rock, right? That's where my strength comes from. That's where my joy comes from. If I have that, if I have peace with God, then I can have the peace of God. There's one last thing I do want to say, though, yeah. because it is Hakuna Matata, right? Mm -hmm. Which says, it means no worries, right? Um, for the rest of your days. It's my problem-free philosophy, philosophy yes. right? And it is about being like this carefree. Right. And so the world says this. The world says you need to, if you, if you don't want to worry, detach yourself from reality. Yes. Right. Don't think about that. Distract yourself. And that's not biblical instruction at all. No. Um, I was listening to the sermon called um, Living from the Inside Out by Pastor Vlad. I can't, I can't remember if that was his first Vlad name or last name. Vladchuk. Vladchuk. Maybe so. He's, you think he's like kind of Russian? Yeah. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From Mother Russia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, uh, he was talking about how the Bible says um, in, in a few places, I went to look, look up some scripture too, that God wants us to fill our hearts, mm -hmm. right? He doesn't want us living empty. He doesn't want us living detached. When, when, when the world's counsel is you need to just empty yourself, you need to detach, he says no. You, uh, the Bible says that you need to fill yourself because Matthew uh, 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, right, from out of the heart the mouth speaks. Uh, keep your heart um, uh, vigilant. Uh, with, with, with vigilance, fr from out of it flows the springs of life. Uh, there's another verse that says um, that uh, it's not what goes into a um, a man's mouth that defiles him, but what comes out, right, of his heart, is right, is what defiles a man. And so our heart is a place where if we store up good treasure, mm -hmm. right, we will produce goodness from it, right, because out of the heart. And so it's not, it's not that we're trying to empty ourselves of anything. It's that we're trying to fill ourselves. Now, here's, here's why I say that, okay? It's because he, Pastor Vlad was talking about this illustration about how on the playground a little sinkhole started to form, and they, 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 uh, when, when it collapsed, they found like a little tunnel under there in, in that area. And he said it wasn't that the ground above the sinkhole was all that heavy, mm -hmm. right? Like you got a bunch of heavy kids, <laughs> right. little chubby yeah. kids on the, and, and it just collapsed, <laughs> right? It's, it's just that there was an empty space. Mm -hmm. And it's not that life is just like, mm. you know, totally chaotic or whatever, uh, you know, and, and it, it's full of problems and, you know, issues and, and life-changing events always happening. It's not that it's that. It's that there's an empty space yeah. that you need to fill. And once you feel that, right, then you could withstand whatever life throws at you, right? You know, and that's, that's really good stuff. And so, you know, we need to learn to fill our heart with the Word of God so that yeah. we can withstand. It's a short place. It's a rock. Yes, and that yeah. is ultimately going to be uh, the, the strength of, of whatever you need to go through. Yeah, amen. What better to fill those gaps? Then with just with wanted that. to correct myself. His last name is Savchuk. Yes, Savchuk. I think it, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that's right. Any, can you read it? Um, there's not much to add, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, now one of the main things I was thinking about is uh, you know, as Christians, as God's children, uh, we tend to forget. I mean, there's many stories in the in the Bible where oh, yeah. God's children forget what He's done for them, yeah. what He saved them out of. Yes. Yes. I mean, Moses split the seas, and once again, the next problems arise. They forget about God, about what he's already done to them. And I feel like that's what we kind of do a lot, time to time. And like you said, if your foundation is not on that rock, right. then you're going to find that, that hole, right. like you Absolutely. said, right? But one of the daily things I was thinking about is um, what you can do is, because uh, if, of course, pray, right? Because if you're not mm -hmm. praying, then mm -hmm. you're, you're panicking. Right. And then man, that's, <laughs> that's good, man. That's good. If you're not Put praying, then you're panicking. I'm gonna if you're hashtag not praying, that one. You're panicking. That's so, right. <laughs> and then worship, also worship. You know, yeah. you got to put yes, your time sir. to worship. And um, if you're not worshiping, then it goes back to you're you worried. panicking, you're worrying. 
Exactly. So, uh, and I know it says in Philippians 4 to 6, don't worry about anything instead pray about everything. Right, yeah. right, right. So I feel like if you're not doing those uh, just the daily things like that, you can simply get pulled away, mm-hmm. feeling like, like you said early, uh, earlier, Jordan, like uh, the world is like mm-hmm. going crazy, but really it's not. It just, it's just, a, there's just a little sinkhole that's just, right. or that little hole that's right. pulling you down. Mm-hmm. And you have to face that enemy or whatever it is directly too as mm-hmm. well. Because I know uh, there's many times where, I had issues or anger problems in my life, and no one else can help me, you know, you know, clear that out. It, it takes you, you have to go directly to the enemy Amen. and call him out Amen. to yep. make it happen. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, but, you have um, to be bold. And I think that with our human flesh, we have been conditioned that we want to talk about our worry mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we feel like we just have to vent, oh, we just have to get it out. Mm. But who are you talking to? <coughs> After Simba lost his father, the first person who he spoke to was his uncle Scar. Mm. Mm-hmm. And instead of giving him comfort and support, right. he said, this is your fault. Yeah. What have yeah. you done? And so we have to be careful who we're getting our counsel right, right. from. Sure. You know, it wasn't until, <coughs> you know, after he leaves and he's filled with so much worry and so much, you know, um, distraught. He's so distraught that he finds Timon and Pumbaa and then you know, still he's he's at this point he's avoiding it. He's mm. ignoring it. And we have to be careful that we don't do that to the mm-hmm. point that we lose ourselves completely. Mm-hmm. We have to talk on the good things that God does. You know, like you said, if you're not praying, you're panicking. If you're worried, mm-hmm. you're not worshiping. Right. And so in all that we do, we have to, you know, w- the, we're going to have worries. We're going to have fears. We're going to have our doubts. But you know, God never told us that those things wouldn't come. And mm-hmm. just because we're Christians, saved, born mm-hmm. again, they don't just disappear. Right, right. You know, we, we say all the time, it's not just rainbows and cupcakes and sprinkles. <laughs> Once you become <laughs> saved, things are going to happen. But we have been given instruction yes, on yeah. how to handle those things. Um, my second question for my panel, because we're, we took our theme scripture out of the book of Revelation, there are so many, unfortunately, a lot of people some churches who will not preach or will not base word their teachings their preachings around revelation because Mm -hmm. revelation the book of revelation is known to cause worry and fear in people Mm -hmm. some people even avoid reading it altogether why should we rejoice in what we read in the book of revelation you know um one of the I, i know they even make movies about you know mm-hmm. the, yeah. the the revelation, right? right. It's not Disney movies, no, it ain't <laughs> Disney movies. <laughs> but yeah, they they've made some movies about that. I'm a, I, w- I kind of want to go back to um, the joy of our salvation, right? It is again, the foundation is this: if you have peace with God, you can get the peace of God. Mm-hmm. And so, if you have the joy of your salvation, that that is not superficial. That is something that runs way way down deep yeah. into your soul. I mean, it, it it is totally rooted and grounded in you. And so, um. You know, come hell or high water, right? Mm-hmm. I know that I'm saved. I know that that God loves me. I know that. So, so what does that mean again? Go a little bit further than that. Well, how how can I have peace with God? Well, because He sent His Son as uh, as a token of love towards me. Right? He became sin, mm-hmm. and so when when I put my faith in that, when I meditate on that, because worry is a it's a form of meditation. Yes, yes it is. It really is. Mm-hmm. But if, if you can think on those things, which Paul instructs us to do, think upon your doctrine, think upon your, you know, that, that God loves me, he's, he's got me in his hand, mm-hmm. I cannot be plucked, mm-hmm. right? I, I, am, I am in the faith. If I am his, then I am his. I'm called by his name. You can't reverse that. And so it, when, when, when I think about those things, it gives me peace and to say, hey, you know what, no matter what I go through or what comes my way, uh, God still loves me. And, I, and though I may have to go through some things, I heard, I heard a pastor say this one time, that I, God may put me in some uncomfortable situations, mm-hmm. right? Uh, he is the potter and I'm the clay at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So I don't, I don't really ha- have a say in that. He, he's, he's doing something in me. If I don't understand what God's hand is doing, I know that his heart towards me is for my good. He loves That's me. Right. He's not gonna, it, it's it's kind of like this. What the joy of the Lord does, it kind of gives you like a buoyancy, to stay above. I, I know I know there's a scripture I was going to read too. It was in uh I think it was 2 Corinthians um yeah, 4 and 9 it says that we are persecuted 
but not abandon, right? right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's buoyancy. I'm, I'm always above. I might go down a little bit, but I'm coming back right back up. I might be struck down, but I'm not destroyed. And yeah. so the, the peace of God, the joy of God, it gives you the strength to stay afloat no matter what comes your way. Yeah. Amen, so that's, that's why I'm not really scared of <laughs> revelation because yeah. I'm his. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Rudy, did you want to add? Uh, yeah, so uh, when I was thinking about revelations, and uh, of course it talks about a lot of things that's going to happen and the signs. Um, it, the main thing that came to my head is because um, Jesus is the person we pray for, right? Mm -hmm. he, we're, he, we're, everything he's done, we, I've seen and witnessed, you know, his miracles, his uh, his transformation from his children. Mm -hmm. I've seen people's uh, past and afterwards with their problems. Yeah. So now when, I, when I'm thinking about the, about the book of Revelations, the world is filled with, uh, you know, of course, um, the enemy has mm -hmm. made his children struggle, even distract them from God's glory. And all these things, I know, I know it's not godly, but it just, Jesus is coming back to reset that. Oh, He's yeah. the one that's going right, to right. put it all in check. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've seen enough. I haven't seen everything, but I've seen enough of the world where I'm sick of seeing it. Sure. And I feel like it's thrown in my face constantly. Right. Yeah. Even if I don't, I'm not trying to see it, somehow it's I, it gets around and I hear it and I see it. And uh, there's times where I'm sick of it. I want to say something about yeah, it, but sure. it's under God's grace if he wants mm -hmm. me to or not. But when I think about when uh, the signs of Jesus coming back, I, I I can't think enough about how, like, just getting a hug from him. Like, just to right. see the world be, you know, finally... To set it, you know what I mean? Because I'm tired of seeing it. That's good, man. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, good, but I'm tired yeah. of seeing Amen. it. Yeah. So yeah. When, when I think of this stuff, um, I'm just all the influencing and all the confusion will be set clear. And uh, all the ones who uh, accepted Jesus in their heart will, will see the other side. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. That's, That's good, man. I, uh, I was reminded of Revelation 12, 11 that says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. The end of the story, we know the end of the story. Yeah, the do. end of the story is that we have overcome. It may not look like it right now, <laughs> but we have overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the word of our testimony. And our testimony is just what, um, what he was sharing. Christ has died in my place. He Amen. became my yes, sin. Yes. He paid for my sin. And so we can rejoice mm -hmm. because this race is rigged. Yeah, it's like if you know that you've paid your rent, you know you're not going to be evicted. Mm -hmm. You have that 100%, you know, you, you stand on that. Yeah. I'm not going to be evicted because I paid my rent. Right, right. We know that we've overcome because we are saved. Jesus so we don't all. have to worry about what happens in Revelation. Hakuna Matata, because mm -hmm. God has already told me, he's already sent Jesus as a sacrifice for myself, he's already saved me. I love him. I follow him. I follow his commandments. Mm -hmm. I pray to him daily. I know that what happens in Revelation is not going to affect me. Amen. And like you said, Rudy, there are, we, we know, mm -hmm. you know, those that are saved, born again, mm -hmm. and know what is to come. Because it's not like, it's not like when you start a Disney movie or any movie mm -hmm. where you don't know the ending. Mm -hmm. We know the ending. Amen, amen. And yeah. we've known the ending since when this book was written. Mm -hmm. And so is there an excuse for us to worry when we already know? No, there is no excuse. We should not worry. Do not worry. But that's why it's so important that we spread this word, right. that mm -hmm. we take it out there because there are people who are worried about what's to come because they don't know. So mm -hmm. we have to share with them. So it is, I'm so glad that we... Um, we took a, th a, a theme scripture from the book of Revelation mm -hmm. because it gets people's minds thinking. Mm -hmm. It gets people yeah. to say, you know what? I've read all the other books of the Bible, but I'm afraid of Revelation. But now you don't have to be afraid, you know? Hey man, it, you know, one of the things, though, I, I can remember as a kid looking at Revelation and thinking, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I better get right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it is one of those checks, too, that says, hey, yes. like, uh, if, if you don't fear God, you're not hearing God. Right. You're not. And so the fact that that, that put a fear in me, I'm grateful because I, I turned. Mm -hmm. I began to repent. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's ultimately is what we want to do. Say, hey, God, I'm not, I'm not, I, I fear, I fear judgment, but I know that your love, it covers. Yeah. And so I run towards your love. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so that's, that's a comforting thing. When my brother was really young, he read the book of Revelation and then 
you know, we were still in school, and so my mom was telling us, you know, get ready for school, you know, do your homework, things like that, just keep at the upkeep. And he said, why, Mom? I read the book of Revelation. <laughs> what do I got to worry about? Why do I got to even waste my time in school? <laughs> well, now he's, you know, he's got his college degree, so that's why, folks, you you keep going, you know, you, everything yes. doesn't stop, you know. Um, so on the topic of Hakuna Matata, because you see that branded on T-shirts, you see it, you know, sometimes it's somebody's Facebook post or the Twitter post. What does the Christian version of Hakuna Matata, that saved, born again, living for Christ version, look like to you? Because to the world, it's, I don't care about anything. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned with anything. But what does that look like to you, that Christian version? Um, when you read in First Peter 5, 7, it said, casting all your cares and I've heard people, or another translation that says, rolling all your cares over onto him because he cares for you. And so I imagine just taking the burden that is on my shoulders and just laying it down at his feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just because we are born again, spirit-filled people, that does not mean that we're not going to have struggles sure, or they're not, sure. we're not going to have questions. I had a, a beautiful young girl ask me a couple of days ago. She said, well, is it wrong? to ask God why or why not? And I said, I don't think it's wrong because if you have a relationship with a parent mm -hmm. and you have a question, you'll ask them. If, whether it's a why or a why not question, you will ask. Mm -hmm. And we need to have that same freedom. I think sometimes we have the wrong idea that we can't ask negative things mm -hmm. or we can't question mm -hmm. God or we can't question his will. It, it doesn't mean that um, we can't or we won't. And God knows everything about us. Mm -hmm. So those things that are, that, that are kind of rolling around in our minds and in our hearts, God already knows that. We have to be open, so open with him that we can share everything, mm -hmm. even the questions, right. even the confusion, even the why not or how come. That's right. And, and when we do that, we recognize that he is... God, mm -hmm. and we are not, no matter what things look like, he is still in Amen. control. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we, we, sh we, we, um, we should want to share our worries and our fears and our doubts mm -hmm. with him above anybody else. And I think the reason that so many people, including myself, I'm guilty of this, have gone to other people is because we want that reciprocation back. Mm. But if you listen closely enough to Christ, when you tell him your worries, he does reciprocate. Amen. Maybe it's not always what we want to hear. But, you know, he does reciprocate. Yeah, you know, one of the things I, I was thinking about was uh, Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when, when Jesus came to visit them, we had, uh, um, oh, my gosh, I, I should have made a note. I always get these two mixed up. <laughs> be, be a Mary, right? Be my, a Mary. I, my mom says, be a Mary, don't be a Martha. Cause, yes. uh, so, so the word anxiety is this. It, it means to be, um, have divided mind. Mm -hmm. A divided mind. You got, you got, I got a scattered brain. I got to take care of this. I got to take care of that. I got to take care of that. All, you, you notice all the demands, right? And so what happens is this. Jesus becomes one of the 50 things that you're thinking about, right? right? <laughs> instead of, instead of that one thing. And so when, when you have, when your mind, the Bible says this in Isaiah 26, 3, when your mind is stayed on him, mm -hmm. he will give you perfect peace. And so, you know, it's one of those things that you just got to live by faith sometimes, and not by sight, and that faith, living in that place of faith is a hakuna matata. It, it, is, a, it is a place of peace to say, hey, you know what? God's, God's got this. God's got me. I know everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, adding on to that, uh, one of the things I was thinking about is, uh, like, you know, you said the faith. That's a good one. Um, when, when you said that, what came to mind is uh, when I had issues before, you know, before I had my relationship, uh, relationship with God, I would have like uh, I would get frustrated over like little things. If I had those little things now, I would, you know, uh, because of God's faith and what He's already done, those are not even like problems mm -hmm. to me. Like I know one of them. I don't know if you guys heard, but we got a flat on the way. Yeah, <laughs> I heard about that. Heard <laughs> but if I had that problem years ago with a bunch of people, I'll, I'll probably be be pretty mad about it. Right. But <laughs> you know what I mean? I was so worried when when I heard about it. I told mom, "Call Sam and Rudy, make sure they're okay." Yeah, yeah. My mom was like, "She, her, and Rudy are like so cool, like cool yeah, as a yeah. cucumber. You guys weren't even worried." And well, you're right. I, I think you might want to explain yes. what you're referring to. That 
where you were going and who you all had with you when oh, yeah, you got well, that I mean, flat. Yeah, when we got that flat, I mean, we got like 15 kids in the, in the you van. You were on your you know way to I mean? the youth trip. Yeah, yeah on a youth this trip. Past <laughs> yeah, 15 kids in a passenger van. In a passenger van. So I'm thinking about all these kids. All, I wasn't really worried about driving the van when I was there. The only thing I was kind of worried about, there's like, if someone hits another car, because you know how, like you right. said, your mind you goes all crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, I just knew at the end of the day, like, God's going to make it happen. I'm not oh, going to yeah. let a flat tire stop it or... Um, I know we went to a hotel. It wasn't the one we wanted. That's not going to stop us here. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. So it just, um, I know it's just his process. It might not be smooth, but at the end of the day, uh, God's glory will, what he wants will happen. Oh, so. yeah, man. Yeah, but, um, and the youth had such yeah, a good time. <laughs> yeah, so. They had such but, a good time. But yeah, anyway, back to what I was about to say. Uh, <laughs> um, what I was thinking on uh, about that phrase, uh, one of the main things is now when you're in the faith, Nothing really else matters. You don't really, mm -hmm. you don't really dwell on these small things. And like you say, we know the ending, right? And mm -hmm. I always think back. Well, every time I get set back or something happens, I always look back. Well, God, you got, you got, you know, you got to pray to God to your situations. Amen. You got to confess what, uh, what you've done or what you worry about. Cause as, as God's children, God's not gonna be like, well, okay, well, good right. luck with that. <laughs> like I don't, I don't think, right. no. I don't. He loves his children too much, or he's not gonna say that type of stuff. So. I think it's important. Make sure you know you give everything you got to God. Uh, say everything. I mean, it might sound like complaining, but you let them know. I'd rather have you tell God that than you tell your coworker right. or a family member or whoever, and and then the enemy starts working his ways and yes. uh, deception yes. and so far, so forth. You know what I mean? But as of that, I think that's all I have to say. Amen. Amen. But, amen. You know, I think that when you hear Hakuna Matata, you immediately associate it with it means no worries for the rest of your days. Mm -hmm. Well, my Christian version of Hakuna Matata says, it means I have worries, but not for the rest of my days mm -hmm. because the tide is going to turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simba went with Timon and Pumbaa and he thought he would just live in the high life. And we know that, you know, his back in the pride lands, they were starving, they were hungry. Nala comes and finds him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even Nala that could convince him. It wasn't Timon, it wasn't Pumbaa. But if you remember that scene, where Rafiki, he's doing something, and then, like, <laughs> the wind comes by and all these little leaves, and he, like, something happens in him, and he runs back. He has a revelation, And he right? has a revelation, yeah, yeah. and he says, it is time. We're going to go through worry. We're going to have our fears. We're going to have our doubts. But God is always working, and there is going to come that time when that tide is going to turn. Amen. And, mm. it's gonna, and then you're going to go from having all of these anxieties, because you mentioned Mary and Martha. Right, right. David had anxieties. Yeah. Um, Elijah had anxieties. Jonah, there, there are people in the Word of God. So if there are people in the Word of God who had these interactions with Jesus, mm -hmm. had anxieties. Who are we to know who, or to think that we wouldn't have them? We're going to have them. But when we go through our worry, we just have to stay steadfast on knowing mm -hmm. that he's working and this tide is going to turn. And mm -hmm. when it turns, when God mm -hmm. works, he works quick. It's fast. And it's, it's, it's quick. It's beyond what you even Oof. thought. You know, we're praying <laughs> for. too fast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And you're a huge testimony yeah. that when we're praying for something, it's like we're just praying for this little thing. God says, you just wait. You're going through this, but you wait. And then bam, 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 bam. It's like mm -hmm. greater. It's bigger. It's larger. It's more miraculous than what we could have ever thought. So we just have to hold on. We just have to stay steadfast. And we have to keep Pressing towards Amen. him, getting to know him, being yep. intimate with him mm -hmm. above all, and giving our worries to him. Amen. Amen. Oh, That's good. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. We've had yeah, so much you. good discussion. I don't I want this theme to end. <laughs> no, I know. Gosh, it has yeah, been this, such yeah, this is so a good. good, good theme. Um, we're going to go ahead and get to our tithes and our offerings. And there's going to be a number up here on your screen. We want to continue to thank everyone who gives into the ministry. Um, you're not just doing it. Because we, we need to keep lights on. You're doing it because you're obeying God's word. And above all, that's, that's what matters. Um, we, we thank um, God because when we give, we know it's coming back to us. Mm -hmm. Greater and bigger and larger and more miraculous in the form of whatever it is that we need. And so we just want to thank you so much for giving your tithes and your offerings. For being a blessing to the ministry, but also for, for um, obeying God's word. Because above anything else, we want to make sure that we're obeying God's word and what he says. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get, get into a few announcements. My first announcement, please write this down. July 5th 
through the 9th. That's a Monday through a Friday. It's going to be our church summer break. So on Thursday, July 7th, there will be no Thursday night Bible study. Um, we're going to take a break, but we, we have plenty of throwback um, services that you can catch. You know, like I said, catch up on this Lion King theme. Um, and then on my second announcement is July 10th, we're going to have a work day at the new building that we're going to be having church in. Because if you have not heard, Power Praise Fellowship is getting ready to build a brand new church, a beautiful yeah. facility. Yeah. So we're going to be housed at 400 South Compress. On July 10th, we're going to be doing a work day. We're going to be doing some cleaning, some painting, some moving in, because our first service at this new location is going to be on July 18th. So if you're interested in getting on in on that work day, please send us a message, and we'll give you some more details. Um, next, we have our community appreciation event, July 24th. Jordan is going to give you some more information on what we're going to be doing. Yeah, we have a few businesses here in town. Uh, I, I want to continue to say how Nelly says it. We're going to wrap our uh, arms around Las Cruces and just bless some businesses. with. Uh, I, I, we talked to some already. We're going to paint, maybe do a little bit of yard work, clean some windows, r maybe replace a few lights, those sort of things, just to say, hey, you know, we see you, we love you, and uh, we support you. So. Amen. I think this is one of my favorite ministries because we do. We get out into the community, mm -hmm. and we show them in a time that's so crucial that there's so much, you know, um, controversy on the church that we do. We love our community, and we, we are there to bless our community um, in any way that we can. So paint, if it's painting, if it's yard work, if it's anything, you know, I'm so glad that we have a ministry, that we have people who have a heart for that and who knows that that's their calling. Um, next announcement I have is August 1st is going to be our children's dedication and baptism. So if you are interested in being either baptized, if you are interested in having your children dedicated, please send us a message so we can get you some more details. We don't care if you go to Power Praise Fellowship or you don't. We don't care if you've never stepped foot in a church or you have. Please come. Please get baptized. Please dedicate your children. It's going to be an awesome service. Please message us for more details on that. And lastly, please don't forget, we have church service this Sunday, we're starting a brand new theme. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to give it away, but it's going to be a good one. Yes. So if you can, we have in-person service at 1045 at 320 West University Avenue. If you can't join us in person, please join us live on our live stream on either our Facebook or our YouTube channels. I think I covered just about everything. Yeah. All right. I was telling. I felt a little bit rusty when we started because I feel like I haven't facilitated in a while, but I have been so blessed by tonight's discussion. Thank you for um, the panel being here with me. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday and for Thursday night Bible study. Thank you so much. <laughs>